In this video, I'm gonna do a quick overview of the k-nearest neighbor algorithm, uh, then perform a walkthrough uh, demo implementation on a regression problem uh, using the Boston uh, dataset. So the k-nearest neighbor, abbreviated as uh, KNN, um, is a supervised machine learning algorithm that we use for both classification and uh, regression tasks, where the objective is to predict a uh, categorical uh, variable in the case of classification or continuous or numeric target uh, target variable in the case of uh, regression uh, based, based on a set of input variable or features in our case here, X1 or X2. Um, so for example, in a medical diagnosis, uh, diagnosis problem, right? This Canon algorithm uh, can be used to predict the likelihood a patient having a certain disease, you know, this could be uh, maybe cancer, for example. And this could be based on some symptoms and medical history, right? Now, we also consider KNN as non-parametric, okay? So non-parametric just means that, you know, those methods that don't make any assumptions about the underlying distribution of data. So you might think of this as, you know, uh, those methods that don't assume a particular parametric distribution, such as the Gaussian, you know, normal distribution curve, right? Uh, which would require to compute or estimate some set parameters such as the uh, mean or and, and, and variance, right? So uh, again, we consider KNN as a lazy learning algorithm uh, based on those, you know, uh, lack of assumptions about the distribution of data, okay? And this is actually what makes KNN algorithm uh, a simple but powerful technique right, that can be used on a range of applications, for example, um, you know, medical diagnosis, because, you know, particularly doesn't make any underlying, you know, assumptions about the data distribution, you know, that is complex and nonlinear, okay. But how does KNN work, right? Now, KNN just works by finding the K closest data points. So if your K is equals to three, you'll try and find the K closest, you know, uh, neighbor based on those data points in a feature space, okay, uh, given a query or test data point, okay, we're going to look at an example really quick here, and then you classify or predict the target value of the test point, in our case here, the blue dot, based on the labels or values of the k nearest neighbor, so we have one gray here and two, uh, two black uh, data points, right, so the majority class labels here um, you know, we're going to use the majority class labels here to predict our new data coin uh, as blue, okay? Now, another thing to keep in mind here, the K parameter here, this K parameter here uh, just represents the number of nearest neighbor that will be used to make a prediction, right? So again, com in combination with uh, distance metrics like Euclidean distance that will be computed and then we use the number of nearest neighbor that we use to make the prediction. So for example, in, uh, here uh, we have a k equals to three, right? Uh, so the algorithm here will select three nearest neighbors, right? And make a prediction based on the majority of the class of this neighbor. So in this case, we have class A here as gray and class B, right? So there, there are two neighbors here that are of class uh, B, right? And one neighbor that is of class A. So the algorithm will predict this blue class as class B, okay? Uh, lastly here, the choice of your K can have some significant impact on the accuracy of your KNN algorithm. Now, the smaller the K value, right? So if you have a K value of three, so this makes the algorithm more sensitive to variations in your data, okay? But if you have a large number uh, of K here, a large value of K, uh, it just makes it more robust to noise and outliers, right? And again, you know, this might lead to a, uh, uh, a loss of uh, detail or information. So finding the optimal K here, again, uh, just depends on specific data set and problem you're trying to solve, right? Uh, and the only way to find the optimal K is to just perform uh, a number of experimentation, right? And validation. So running just different experimentation with the different parameters. All right, so now that we know that, so let's look at how to implement this in uh, Weka. Okay, so I'm just gonna expand this. So to do this, um, we wanna click on, uh, we're gonna still use the uh, Boston uh, dataset. 
So classify tab, click on choose. So in our case here, so we're just gonna select IBK, right? So in worker, this is called the lazy. So IBK here, you see the tooltip here, uh, just tells us this is the K nearest neighbor classifier, select on that, and then click on the name of the alg algorithm uh, to check more about the algorithm configuration. So you click on that, we just pop up this uh, object window uh, editor, and we can see that uh, there are some important parameters here that uh, we can actually change. Now, the size of the neighborhood is controlled by this parameter here, Canon. Right. So, for example, it's set one. Then predictions uh, using the so, uh, single most similar training instance. Right. Uh, that's what it means. You know, uh, given a new uh, data point, um, you know that's you know requested. Right. Anyway, so some of the common uh, values of k could be three, seven, eleven. Right. Up and twenty one if it's a larger uh, data data set. Right. Now, Worker also can automatically uh, do this for you, uh, especially if you set this to uh, true, right? Cross-validate, right? Um, or rather by setting the cross-validate par parameter to true, okay? So Worker will just automatically select the best uh, uh, K value. Another important parameter here is the uh, distance measured. So here, uh, by default, we have the linear and then such, right? If you click on choose, you can see, uh, actually, let's go back here. So if you click here on the name here, we can see the distance function. We can actually, uh, we have all this available, right? Manhattan, Minoski, Chebyshev, and Euclidean. By default, we use the Euclidean uh, distance. Uh, this is very important, especially if you wanna calculate the distance between instances. This is good for numeric data with the same scale, right? Okay. We can also use Manhattan distance here, uh, especially if your attributes differ in the type of measures it has or different types, right? All right, so we're just going to leave the default uh, as it is. Okay, just remember it's a good idea to try uh, different uh, K values. So uh, in our case here, we can actually just leave it as it is, or we can choose maybe uh, a different value, maybe uh, three or, or seven, for example. So I just click on OK, uh, and then click on Start. All right. So we can see our RMSC here is actually 4.69, right? Uh, compared to our linear regression there, which was 4.9, uh, we can see our KNN performs marginally uh, better. Okay. Now, uh, this is actually using the default configuration. So if I go back here, uh, just change this maybe to 3, and uh, let's see what happens. So OK. And we can run this again. You can see you can just marginally uh, reduce that. So you can keep trying different values of k uh, to find the optimal, um, you know, parameter. So next we're gonna be looking at uh, uh, decision tree uh, as another form of algorithm that we can use for regression problems. So in summary, we can say the objective of the KNN algorithm uh, is to provide an accurate prediction, right, or classification. Uh, that have minimal assumption about the data and the underlying uh, distribution.